Hello everybody and welcome back to the next tutorial of the uh, wireless penetration testing. Now, we, as you can see right now, I am back on my Kali Linux machine. That is because I finished everything I needed to finish uh, with the capturing handshake and now I want to get back to our main environment S since you don't get confused by me using the other Linux distributions. Now, as I said, I only needed to use it because I only had supported monitor mode on my laptop. But now that we finished with capturing the handshake, now we can continue with the process of attacking basically uh, from any other machine or basically from anywhere else. You do not need to be anywhere close to the wireless uh, access point anymore since we got everything we needed and now for example if you wanted to you could go to the other side of the world and crack this hash that we received in our packet in our basically file that we were capturing packet in now you might notice uh, here i plugged in usb uh, in order to transfer the pa the files that we received from our scanning um, basically on my Linux machine let me just connect it i believe it is this one, Kingston, and now I will paste the files onto my Kali Linux machine. As we can see, open with files. Let us just let this load right here. And basically, you will notice that we actually received four files from this scan. One is .cap, one is .ccv, one is .kismet.ccv, and one is .kismet.net XML. Now, let me just open the terminal right here. And let me enlarge this so you see it a little bit better. Now, out of all these four files, let me just first transfer them to the, to the root section. So, we will do that with move command, so move scan dot cap, scan ccv, scan ccv, and scan, and we want to move it to the root directory, and as you can see, you can also move all four files with one command, as I did right here, and now I will inject, uh, not inject, I will eject this uh, USB drive, eject anyway, we don't need it anymore, so let me just enlarge this terminal right now, clear the screen and go to the root directory. And as we can see right here, there are the four files that we received from our scan. Uh, maybe it would be good if we put them in another directory, so let's make a directory called handshake, and then let's move all of these once again. I should have done this first, but never mind. We can do it right now. And the last one, which is Kismet Net XML. And we want to move it into the handshake directory. Let me just to name it like that. Wait, handshake. Okay. And now, if we change our directory to the handshake directory. We should have these four files right here. Now, you might uh, ask yourself, now what do we need four files for? We only specified in the command to write it to one file. Well, basically the only file we actually need from all of this is the scan.cap file, this one. If you want to, and we will actually, we will delete all the other three since we don't really need them at the moment. So you can delete all of these other uh, files we will not be needing them, so let us just delete them. And now we are left with the scan-01.cap file. Now, basically, uh, in this, uh, this is a file uh, that we can open in Wireshark, and we will open it in a few seconds. And in this file, we can see all the packets that flew basically while we were running the, the authentication attack and while the target was connecting to our wireless access point via four-way handshake. So, in order for you under to understand it, how that all was done, uh, you can basically just, I believe, you can just Wireshark this file like this, 
and it will open this file in the Wireshark. So let us see if this will actually work. I believe it will. Okay. And here it is. We can see the file that we got from our scanning. Now, basically, uh, let us first find something that we can easily find right here. So let me just scroll since there are a lot of packets. And that is the deauthentication packets right here. As we can see, it says even here the authentication, and it will be probably the most common packet in this file right here. You can see it right here. If you go down there, you can also see some of the other options that it has in it. Some of these packets, it will say that it is malformed. Let me just scroll down. Let me just find a packet that could possibly be malformed. Here it is, the, the, the authentication packet that is malformed, malformed, pardon me. And you can also inspect some of the other packets that there are here, but currently we are only interested in the four-way handshake. Now, we know that it is somewhere towards the lower part, since we basically quit the, the authentication, and then right away the target has reconnected to the internet. So let us scroll past the, the authentication. And we should see, let me just put, put this a little bit down so we see it better. And we will see the four-way handshake as soon as this finishes. As we can see, it is right here. Now you can also do this. Uh, you can also uh, find the four-way handshake via ePoll. I believe you type it, or it is not kept the letters. You can just type here smaller letters epol and then press on this arrow right here and it will filter out only the packets that are epol packets and as we can see right here here is the four-way handshake it even says message one out of four two out of four three out of four four out of four now you can basically check out what are the contents of all of these four messages as we can see, they are different, of course. You can, if you want to, basically check out all of these right here, which is VPA, key nonce, which is this one. Now, there are a bunch of these other, uh, other stuff that actually together create the password that we use. And also we can see from who it was sent and to who it was sent to. Now, this right here, the Huawei, is basically my router. And this right here is my mobile phone. So, just wanted to show you that you can inspect the packets in Wireshark. And you can also find the four-way handshake and look at it a little bit better if you wanted to. But that is not really the case that we need to do right here. This is not necessary, so I just close the Wireshark. The next thing that we want to do is basically uh, run our attack on this file brute force attack. Now, how we do that? Well, there is another command that we need to use, which is basically called the air crack. Now, the air crack is a program, is basically just a program that uh, uses our CPU power, our processor power, in order to perform the brute force attack on the hashed password. Now, how does it do that? Well, basically, uh, in Kali Linux, we have uh, pre-installed, well, not pre-installed, we get the some of the word lists, uh, the most common and most used one, and one of the biggest one is Rock U, that is the name of the word list. It comes with around, I believe, 14 million passwords or something like that. Uh, I'm not really sure the exact number, but the thought behind this attack is basically that it uh, hashes all of that, all of those 14 million passwords, and it compares the hash to the hash of the uh, password that we received from our .cap file. And if the hashes match, the aircrack will prompt us with the key found message, and it will give us the uh, password in plain text if it is found in that word list. Now. I will show you how to run that attack. Uh, basically, you will need two things. One of them is this file that we received, which is scan.cap file, or whatever you named it, .cap file. 
and you will also need any word list you want to use. Now I will use the ROQ uh, word list since it is one of the biggest ones. Let me just find it. I'm not really sure where it is. It is in the user share word lists. Okay. So we go to the user share word lists. Word lists is a directory. So CD. Oh yeah, I didn't specify the CD. So user share word lists. And if I ls right here, you can see the rockyou.txt.gz. Now this .gz means that this file is basically zipped, so we need to unzip it. Now let me just remember how do we do that. It's not if we try unzip rockyou.txt.gz. Rockyou and the unzip cannot find zip file. Let's just see how we can unzip this. Something like that, or gzip, I'm not really sure what is the actual command. Yeah, gzip is to zip it, we want to unzip it. So. I can just search right here, since I forgot the command, but it's okay, uh, basically you will forget some of the commands a lot, and all you, all you need to do is basically just search it in Google, so sorry we're having trouble getting our page, but start new session, and let me just turn on, in case I have my burp suit from the previous, the, from the previous section which was the web penetration testing section turned on as a proxy we want to turn it off so we can access the internet and now we want to type how to unzip .gz file and hopefully we will get uh, the solution for this now i will probably remember the command as soon as i see it i can't seem to remember it right now File.gz, the keep option, give gunzip the keep option. We want to unzip a file in Linux. So, give gunzip the keep option. So, it is called gunzip. Let me just see. Yeah, it it is. So, we just type here gunzip and then rockyou.txt.gz. Uh, and we can see now, if we type here ls, we will have the unzipped version of rockyou.txt. Now, if you cat this file right here, you will see it will print out a bunch of these passwords. It will print out basically 14 million passwords contained in, these, uh, in this folder. And we will use this, uh, this file basically, or this word list, in order to perform our brute force attack, which we will continue in the next lecture. Uh, now, I know by default that my password is not in this list, so I will run it once to show you how this works, and I will run it a second time and put my password somewhere around, somewhere near beginning, and you will see how it finds the password. So I will CT control C this, so we don't list all of the words, it will take some time, and I will continue showing you how to perform this attack in the next lecture. Hope I see you there and bye bye.